I love spice bush. How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here. You having a good day? Well, I hope so. Today, I'm going to teach you a big secret about garter snakes. Keep watching. Eastern garter snakes are medium sized snakes up to 27 inches long, give or take. Eastern garter snakes are pretty much the most common and well known snakes of the eastern United States. They can be found practically everywhere, from ponds to marshes, meadows, woodlands, abandoned lots, fields, highlands to lowlands, and even around your house or garage. They really like those wetlands though. Now they are found in most of the eastern half of the United States except for certain parts of New England. They are members of the Colubridae family, which makes up about 85% of the snake species found in the eastern United States. Now, they're not actually garden snakes or gardeners. They're actually named after the garter straps that men used to use to hold up their dress socks. They can vary greatly in appearance though. Their belly is often grayish green or pale yellow. They usually have three yellowish stripes along their back, but sometimes they have two stripes or no stripes at all. Those stripes are often yellow, but sometimes they can be brownish, greenish, or even slightly blue. I've actually seen a bunch of garters where the stripes are barely visible and the spots are more prevalent. Their underlying color, however, is nearly always black or dark brown to olive. My favorite color morph though, I have to say, are the ones that look as if they are checkered. One time I actually saw a garter snake like that all coiled up and as it retreated, um, it was actually confusing to tell which direction the snake was going because the coils were going in opposite directions and those checkers really threw me off. I bet that deters birds sometimes or confuses them. If you look closely, garter snake scales are actually keeled. That means there's a bit of a ridge in the middle of each scale. Garter snakes are often confused, however, with ribbon snakes because they are closely related. Ribbon snakes, though, have a longer nose and uh, a much more slender body, and there's always a white spot present in front of the eye. Garter snakes feed on frogs, toads, insects, sometimes baby snakes, salamanders, fish, tadpoles, and worms. Sometimes they will feed on mice or birds or even carrion. Kind of an interesting thing. Now, as you might guess, garter snakes actually do hibernate in the winter, but it's not called hibernation when it comes to snakes. It's called brumation. Don't ask me why. And they will be found often in, underneath boulder fields, even under the foundations of houses and things like that, where there's a lot of crevices and stuff in the boulders or in the foundation. And actually, they've been known to share their dens or hibernaculums with copperheads and timber rattlesnakes and other species of snakes. Sometimes there'll be hundreds or thousands of them, but usually just a few. Now there are plenty of things that also eat garter snakes. Things like possums, raccoons, hawks, skunks, larger snakes, and even bullfrogs. One time when I was doing a program, I actually looked up to see a red-tailed hawk flying by with a garter snake in its talons. And the snake was still trying to get loose. I felt really bad for it, but uh, I didn't have my camera with me. Now, when alarmed, garter snakes, like other species of snake, will actually musk. And this smells horrible, kind of sweet, but pretty nasty. And I'm sure it tastes really bad. Another thing that they'll do when threatened is they'll actually flatten out their body to look much bigger, to show up those spots and stripes, and to actually look like something perhaps venomous. <sighs> So I have a bit of a story, and you can actually read about it on my blogger. But to make a long story short, one day I was doing a program, and there was this garter snake. Needless to say, this garter snake wound up biting me. You can read about it. And it opened its mouth so wide that it actually couldn't let go of my hand. There was a lot of itching and burning. It hurt, and there was a lot of blood. The reason being is, garter snakes are venomous. Yeah, venomous. Go figure. Now, humans aren't really affected by this venom, but in my case, I was. And the reason being is 
Garter snakes actually don't have the hypodermic fangs that other snakes have to inject that venom. They actually have to chew to envenomate their prey. In this case, that's what happened to me. Their venom is geared towards frogs and toads and, you know, amphibians and maybe even mice at times. Uh, it doesn't really affect humans, but in my case it did. It really hurt, and as I said, there was a lot of blood. I even got a couple of pictures of the wound afterwards, but you got to look at my blogger to see them. Now, just after brumation, the males will actually come out to prepare for mating. The females will follow shortly after, and there will be quite a mating ritual going on. Sometimes there will be dozens of males per female all competing for her. The females have this pheromone that just drives the males crazy. Then, you'll have these great big mating balls. One time I actually saw it in a spruce tree, but by the time I got the camera out, most of the males were actually finished and gone. The female can store sperm for quite some time. She'll use that sperm immediately, but she could store it for a couple years if she needs to. When she does fertilize the eggs, it doesn't take too long for them to actually incubate, and she does it in her abdomen. The eggs will hatch inside her, so it's kind of like the reptile equivalent of giving live birth. Look at this. I can't really hold on to them anymore. I've got five garter snakes in my hands. Oh no! Little guy's getting away. Look at my house, garter snakes. Tons of them. <laughs> Aren't they super cute? I love baby reptiles and I love baby snakes. Cutest ever. Now check this out. Garter snake usually gives birth to say around a dozen or so baby snakes, but they could give birth to a lot more than that. The highest on record was 98. Can you imagine 98 baby snakes from, from one mom? Really impressive stuff. <laughs> Another neat thing is the babies are actually independent once they're born. They will go hunt and fend for themselves. Pretty impressive stuff, but they usually do stay put for a while. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my garter snake video. I'm Chris Ignato. Thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit. Chris Ignato, signing out.